Welcome to the second day of Hearth and Harvest, a virtual experience designed to bring us together this season with friends and family, both near and far. I'm Rachel, director and founder of the Museum of Food and Culture. And I'm Lindsay from the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. This week's theme is apples. Thanks again for your support of our organizations with your generous donations. We do appreciate it. And let's get started. So today we've got the amazing Adelena Peral joining us. Um, she's a science educator at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science, who's going to help us see apples in a whole new way through the eyes of a scientist. So get ready to dissect our favorite fruit and enjoy. Hello friends. My name is Adelina and I'm a bilingual educator with the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. Today, we will be performing an apple dissection. So I know what you're thinking. Why would we do a dissection on an apple? Well, I'm sure you've heard of dissections in reference to all sorts of things like frogs and other animals. But the truth is, when we do a dissection, this gives us a chance to really understand and investigate what's inside. So that's what we're gonna do today. And if you have an apple at home, why don't you grab one and follow along with me? All right, so we're now ready to begin our dissection. Now the first step to any dissection is to make a thorough observation of our specimen. So tell me, what do you notice about your specimen? I notice that mine is red and has little bits of yellow. Um, I notice some little brown spots all around it. I also notice that mine is kind of smooth. Is there anything else that you notice about your specimen? Now, why do you think that some apples are red while others are yellow, while some are kind of mixed colors? Well, it turns out it has to do with a pigment called chlorophyll. You've probably heard chlorophyll in reference to what makes plants green. However, it turns out that this pigment comes in different types, so there's different types of chlorophyll, and it comes in different concentrations. That's why some parts of this apple are red, while other parts are yellow. So all of this skin on the outside is what we refer to as the exocarp. Exo means outside and carp means skin. Now what else do you notice about the outside? Well, maybe you notice the ends of it. You can see at the top right here that this it has a little stem on it. This is what's called the pedicle. And if we turn it around on the other end, it looks like it has a leafy area. This is what's referred to as the calyx. So now that we have made a thorough observation of our apple, we can now begin our first incision. So for our first cut, what we are going to do is we are gonna put the pedicle and the calyx towards our hand, just like this. We are gonna set it down and we are going to make one big incision right down the middle. So we're gonna cut it in half, all right? And this part can be a little bit difficult simply because the core of the apple is a little bit tough to get through. So it's totally okay to ask a parent or a guardian to help you with this part because it does take a little bit of strength. The other thing though, is that we don't usually cut an apple this way. It gets, um, it lets us have an interesting look into what's inside of the apple and lets us kind of look at it in a new way. All right, so now that we got that, ready for the big reveal? Whoa, that's pretty interesting, huh? You've probably never seen an apple that way. Well, so what do we notice about the inside of the apple now? Well, you probably notice that the seeds are concentrated in this little star area right there. Hmm, we'll get back to that. And we also probably notice how big this layer is right here. This right here is glucose. It's made of sugar and it's why apples taste so yummy. But let's get back to those seeds. Now, first of all, what do seeds do? Well, you probably guessed it. If you were to plant this seed into the ground and watered it and, you know, had sunlight and things like that, you would be able to grow an apple tree. Well, the reason is because these seeds contain genetic information called DNA. 
It's passed down from apples to apples. Now, it's all contained inside of this little star thing right here. Now, this right here is actually what's called the placenta. It's called the placenta because different parts of the apple are giving these seeds nutrients and it is fed through this placenta right here. All right, so anything else you notice about the inside of this apple? Maybe you notice that some parts of it are um, different colors. I have an old apple right over here, you can see. You can see how brown this one is compared to this one. You can see little brown spots. Now, why do you think that happens? Well, let me ask you a question. Have you ever gotten a cut? Well, what happens after you get a cut? Well, usually, right, a scab starts forming. That's the same thing that happens to the apple. Whenever you cut it, it's like you're giving this apple a, a cut. And so this brown stuff starts forming in order to heal the apple. All right, so now let's move on to our last and final cut. All right, now for our last and final cut, what we're gonna do is we are just going to cut a little triangle out of the apple. So we're going to make two cuts and sometimes you might have to pull it out by yourself. And we get a little triangle just like this. Now what this lets us do is it lets us make an observation about the different layers of the apple. So once again, we can see the exocarp down here, the outside skin, and we can see the endocarp right up here, all this yellow stuff. And if we look really, really closely, we can see a very, very thin layer right above that skin. That is called the mesocarp, meaning the middle skin. So one more time, let's go through. We have the exocarp, and then we have that mesocarp right in between, they're very thin, and then we have that endocarp. And that is our last incision. But feel free to keep cutting into the apple to see if you can discover some new things. Maybe cut into the seed and see what it looks like on the inside. The important thing is that today, we took something ordinary, an apple. We eat apples all the time. And we looked at it the way a scientist would look at it. We dissected it in a brand new way. Well, thank you so much for joining me. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a great day. Thank you. I've never looked at an apple like that. Huge thank you to Adelina for sharing her love of science with us. We are so excited to see you tomorrow, same time and place for the next installment of Apple Day, when we'll head to the kitchen to make yummy food together. And of course, if you'd like to make a donation in support of this program series, please do by heading to either one of our websites, the Museum of Food and Culture, or the Denver Museum of Nature and Science, where you'll see donate buttons and you can click that if you like. We appreciate it so much and see you tomorrow.